A nation's attention is forever drawn to her name, Sofia Herrera, since she mysteriously disappeared at only three years old. Sofia Yasmin Herrera was born on December 30, 2004, and was only three years and eight months old when the events occurred. Everything happened on a Sunday, September 28, 2008, in Rio Grande, Tierra del Fuego, in the south of Argentina. Her parents, Fabian Herrera and Maria Elena Delgado, who was six months pregnant with a girl, decided to go on an outing with some friends, Silvio Jimenez, Noemi Rodriguez, and their three children, one aged nine, another aged six, and the youngest at two. The plan was to spend the day at the John Goodall camping site, have a barbecue, and enjoy nature. On the way, they stopped at a gas station to buy some items they might need for the excursion. Unbeknownst to them, at that gas station, they took the last photo of Sophia. The two families were the first to arrive at the camping site, around 11 in the morning. They paid 15 pesos for admission and entered the camping area. There were no other cars, and they couldn't see anyone else around. Once they arrived, the men and children went to find a camping spot while the women stayed behind to unload, especially since Maria Elena was pregnant. She preferred to wait in the car as she didn't want to walk too much. The men took a short trail to find a suitable camping area, about 100 to 150 meters from the cars, where they unpacked and set up tents. Suddenly, Fabian observed that Sophia was no longer with the children, despite not having any money to purchase items. Initially, she had been following them. Since Sophia was not with them, he assumed she had returned with the mothers. Nevertheless, he decided to go back and check. Only nine or ten minutes had passed when he reached the parking area and realized Sophia wasn't there. Fabian asked Maria Elena about Sophia, to which she replied that she thought she was with him. Fabian told her that the girl hadn't been with them, and that's why he thought she had returned with the mothers. No one had seen the girl. The other children who had followed the parents said she hadn't been with them either. The two families then began desperately searching for her in the forest without success. After 40 minutes of calling and searching, around noon, they notified the park caretaker to call the police and firefighters. The police received the call around noon, but they didn't arrive until two hours later. Two hours. At least in this moment of a child's disappearance, the first hours are crucial. That's why we find it very irresponsible on the part of the police to arrive so late. In our opinion, those two hours could have saved Sophia's life. The police were too confident that the girl would show up, but after those two hours, they brought in police dogs to track Sophia's scent. The dogs marked a path in the forest to a border area of the camping site, where there was a fence separating them from a road. The trail disappeared there. The dogs stood still and didn't continue, as if it had vanished. They brought in other dogs that marked exactly the same route, up to the road where it disappeared. For us, this is the most important lead. And why, if the police had arrived earlier, they could have intervened in time. It was deduced that a car might have taken her away. The road wasn't far from the parents. She might have wandered there, and someone could have taken her, making her cross the fence since she couldn't do it alone. A nearby parked car's occupants denied involvement, having just arrived minutes ago and not witnessed anything. Another open possibility was the presence of several wells in the area connecting to the sea. There were cliffs and a maritime area near the camping site. Walking to that location and falling off a cliff was ruled out given the distance for such a young child alone. However, the Wells presented another scenario. There is a possibility that the girl tripped and fell into one of these wells. Or she was exploring, as children do, and ended up falling in. Why do I say it remained open? Because tests were conducted with two dolls of the same size, height, and weight as Sophia, which were thrown into the well connecting to the sea. However, both were impossible to recover, there were no traces of where they ended up. Therefore, this could have happened with Sophia, and her body might never be recoverable. There was also a stream three kilometers away, but it was ruled out for the same reason as the sea. The girl was too small to reach that area, travel that path, and end up there. Alberto Rutia, the 75-year-old caretaker of the camping site, was investigated. According to the reconstruction, from where he was located, something should have been visible the girl passing by, some struggle. 
but he claims he didn't see her at any moment. Which, in a way, is understandable. Even if it's within your field of vision, you might be busy doing something, thinking about your own matters, and not notice. He was under house arrest for eight months, and a thorough investigation was conducted, but it was concluded that he had nothing to do with it. In the standard procedure for such cases, they conducted family investigations but found nothing incriminating. Despite their desperate search for her, police negligence, which we believe contributed to the case remaining open, led to a 12-hour delay in closing the borders, a significant oversight. This irresponsibility further jeopardized the case, as it provided ample time to take the child anywhere. The crucial first 24 hours, especially the initial moments post-disappearance, were poorly handled by the police. Fortunately, an outcome emerged from this tragedy. The creation of child protection laws in Argentina. However, the story didn't conclude there. Recall that the other family's kids initially denied seeing Sofia? The next day, one of the kids retracted the statement, claiming to have witnessed a man taking Sofia in a gray car. Despite the seeming significance of this lead, they disregarded it later. The child described a man with long, dark hair and brown eyes taking Sofia. While covering her mouth, he placed her in a gray car with a boxer dog inside. Police investigated all cars with these characteristics. A man matched 70% with it but turned out to be a newsstand owner with a solid alibi unrelated to the case. So, what had happened? Psychologists found that the child recognized the importance of his words to adults, leading to a blend of reality and subconscious images. The child's mother, recognizing the man in the image, understood the confusion. Hence, they dismissed the lead, but uncertainties lingered. In this case, they investigated numerous theories, but most proved implausible. The abundance of false theories, approximately 5,000 statements from the general public, has hindered the investigation. Despite good intentions, the leads often led to dead ends, underscoring the need for thorough verification of even minor details. But it's baffling to see those who provide false testimonies during tragedies, such as a woman falsely claiming to be Sophia's teacher. She accused the parents of peculiar behavior, alleging they rarely took Sophia to school, citing her extraordinary qualities. Due to Sophia's parents' peculiar behavior, the teacher suspected that one of her students might be the missing girl. Yet, police investigation disproved this lead. Fingerprints didn't match, and the girl had no connection to the case, turning out to be someone else. A man falsely accused his ex-wife of kidnapping the girl, but they disproved the claim upon investigation. Motivated by jealousy, he faced charges for his deceit. Despite the absurdity, another man made a similar false accusation against his ex-wife fueled by spite. The outcome was the same, reflecting a heartless attempt to give false hope and harm their ex-wives. In 2009, on Father's Day, Fabian received a call with a child's voice saying, Hello, Dad. The phone changed hands, and an adult voice claimed they had kidnapped Sophia, demanding $50,000. Following police guidelines on potential kidnapper calls, Fabian deceived them. Police investigations revealed it was a man attempting a scam, involving his two-year-old son. One must be heartless to exploit a call saying hello, dad for blackmail. Fortunately, the scammer was discovered and arrested. Another one, a neighbor, Veronica Contreras de los Santos, claimed to be a psychic, accusing the parents of murder. Despite rallying support on social media and gathering 20,000 signatures, the police excavated the family's house without finding any evidence. Sophia's mother offered her house for police and media scrutiny to eliminate suspicion on her family and concentrate on finding Sophia. Veronica, the neighbor, was later revealed to be a prostitute with drug and mental health issues, lacking credibility. A man's call alleging abuse towards Sophia led to a police discovery that it was a prison scam orchestrated by inmates seeking a million pesos for their release. They investigated these leads and found them baseless. More implausible is that it sounds like an urban legend. Rumors circulated that a family urgently needing an organ for their son miraculously obtained one after Sophia's disappearance. Police investigated, but it was a hoax. The child receiving the organ post Sophia's disappearance didn't imply anything. They also proposed the idea of large birds of prey in the area, 
like condors or eagles, capable of carrying prey of that weight. However, the lack of any remains made this an implausible theory. In the theory of wild animals, they considered wild dogs in the area, but it was highly improbable. In the kidnapping theory, they suggested someone might have taken Sophia to be sold elsewhere, to a family or individuals with malicious intentions. Among the various possibilities, the police focused more on the theory of the car that took her on the road, where the dogs lost the scent. A robot showed how Sophia might look at different ages to track changes in her growing up. Many times, cases like these are resolved years later. Keeping an eye out, especially for those in the Latin America region where Sophia disappeared, might be crucial if you spot someone with similar characteristics. If you have any information, thoughts, or personal experiences related to Sophia's case, we urge you to share them in the comments below. Thank you for listening, and don't forget to follow for more crime stories.